to settle down for a collective therapy session for today marks the resurrection of the Alex agenda. Now, first thing to get off my chest, apart from significant amounts of phlegm, anybody who's seen the government's white paper on food security, well, they would have read that importing stuff is getting a bit tricky with the war in Ukraine, while EU fanatics will tell you they were right all along about vegetables rotting in the fields because lazy Brits just won't pick them. Well, it is partly true, as we don't have as many migrant fruit pickers as before. So the Environment Secretary, George Useless, sorry, I mean Eustace, has proposed we get a workforce of robots to get the job done. Has he not had a chat with Pretty? Because the other side of the government seems to want to send a 25,000 strong force of healthy migrant men to East Africa. Stands to reason even Justin Welby might agree with my plan, given that the first book of the Bible says God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. Now, that's what I call food for thought. Now, anyone else super bored of the game of catch politicians breaking their own rules? Oh, how the righteous radio and telly folk on certain other channels are exercised today as Nicola Sturgeon forgot to put her McFace nappy on for all of five wee moments. The same media lambasting her for forgetting that COVID only spreads when upright and walking through somewhere rather than sitting down would be the first to call for muzzles to be brought back. I propose that any journalist bleating about mask offences should be made to wear one permanently. You never know. It might even improve the quality of their broadcasting. A Sussex NHS Trust has joined the ranks of the imbecilic by publishing guidance on having to say front hole rather than the V word that nobody's allowed to use anymore lest it offends someone who doesn't like naming genitals. Apparently for birthing humans who don't identify as women, pointing out that their baby is going to come out of their female genitalia may prove traumatic. At this point, I actually think these organisations want to induce mental illness in people. It stands to reason to me that if correct terminology causes a significant mental breakdown, you probably aren't cracked up to being a parent. And it's high time the NHS prioritised safeguarding over encouraging neuroses, frankly, being promoted by the Chinese spyware app TikTok. And France. Oh, yes, we've all just been exposed to Macron's torse poilu, or man rug, to you and I. His private toggy has snapped him in a behind-the-scenes state of unbuttoned relaxation. There he is, where it appears he's actually wearing a hair shirt, apparently in order to woo younger voters. Last time I checked, the youth were more into androgyny than a Sean Connery-worthy Darwin sweater. But a closer look at that thing, look at its strangely defined borders on that fuzz, makes me wonder if it is indeed a hairy chest or an actual hair shirt. It could possibly perhaps be part of a Gallic Easter self-flagellation ritual to encourage Conservative voters away from Le Pen. Well, I decided to conduct some super accurate research on whether Macron's manliness is hot or not in the form, of course, of a Twitter poll. And it turns out that hairy chests are now out. So maybe Emmanuel should keep his firmly inside his shimmies. <laughs>